So I'm going to click through uh, just to show some pictures of what uh, the tabernacle may have looked like. Um, this is the, the measurements that are written in the scripture. Um, so I put, I converted the cubits to feet um, to get a better understanding of what we're used to. Um, and that's really, I mean, that's really kind of small, even considering how large this current Temple Mount looks today. Um, so, um, and then these are some uh, illustrations of what Solomon's Temple may have looked like. Um, so this, these, again, this, um, these are renders and, um, I, it, they're just drawings of what they, they think it could be, but the wall that's on the right, <clears throat> that is next to what today is known as the Temple Mount. And so, um, Temple Mount, I, I guess I, I, I have a view that the Temple Mount, the current traditional site of the Temple Mount, is that it's actually the fortress of Antonia. Now, that's a very controversial thing because for any um, Orthodox Jew, it, it's like, you know, it's heresy to say that. Um, I have been to Israel. I've done uh, lots of Exploring there, I've had a tour, and I, I've seen a lot of archaeological finds. And there are lots that are also in the city of David, which is right next to all of this. Um, so this is a an image of the Herodian temple, um, and it's based on the traditional location of Temple Mount today. So when you go to Israel, you can go to a a museum site that actually has this is just a drawing of it but it actually has a replica just like this that you can see of what the first century jerusalem looked like and uh, this right here is the temple mount and then this right here is what they say is fort antonia and this is the Ophel area, uh, an Ophel. If you look it up online, it's got a couple definitions. It's either a fortified wall or it's the saddle of a hill or mountain. And it's kind of both because you have this fortified wall here and you have still, this is on top of a mountain slope. But again, this, this is the traditional idea of what this area looks like. And this is the city of David, of course, right here, all of this. And down here you have the Kidron Valley. And here you have a, a bridge that goes over to the Mount of Olives. Um, so this, this edge here is the south. This is the east, the north and then the west. Um, so first century, <clears throat> this is just a, uh, another view of this area right here. And so I wanted to kind of isolate that. So again, this is based on current site of today. Of course, it is a reconstruction because this doesn't exist. This is not here, and of course, none of this is here, but this is their reconstruction based on the Temple Mount today and the city of David. So this is kind of like a, really, the only thing that's really real here is what they're representing on this side for the city of David. Um, but this is what um, the Jews in general believe was what the first century people looked like. Um, and this here is a, is a great, I wanted to show this just so that you could see the bedrock. This is a, uh, an example 
based on the Herodian um, site. So again, this where area would be where the Jewish people believe that the Herodian temple was. And this is Fort Antonia. And it's hard to tell in this view in here, but this square is yellow. So that's the temple mount, the square temple mount. This green is the Herodian expansion, which is so hard you can't even tell the colors. But so this green, which is basically this whole expansion outside of this yellow, um, Herod, he expanded this platform. And what is said today is that he expanded it so that the Romans and the Gentiles and the Jewish people could be in close vicinity to the temple, even though they're not, they, you know, they couldn't get on the temple because of their uncleanness. But it is said that he expanded that so that Gentiles could actually approach around the temple and not be on the holy plate. Um, the blue, which you can't tell is blue, I think maybe it's just me up here, but all of these little blue colored things, those are cisterns. And I, this is important on this illustration because this, this platform has a bunch of cisterns. And according to the scriptures, to have a kosher baptism or mikvah, you have to have running water. It has to be flowing or it can't be something from a cistern. It can't be water that sits still for a variety of reasons, but um, I, I did not um, recall the Leviticus scripture, but you can find it in Leviticus about, it mentions like at least two, but I think it's three times where it talks about the water has to be flowing water. And you can't get flowing water from this. Whoops. You can't get flowing water out of these cisterns that are pretty much planted everywhere up here. Um, so I'll, I'll circle back to that whenever I start talking about some other things. Um, so the present day temple site, this is, this is exactly what it looks like today. So this is what, again, there's really no fort over here, but I'm calling out the, the area of where the Antonia fort is. And in most uh, projected documents, they don't even include this extra piece right here that's overlapping this temple mount. So there's some that say that it overlaps into this temple mount area. And if they want to say that, that this is how it was, then they would have to do that and more because when I reveal some other information about the, the army and then the legion of people. Well, I guess I'll, I'll just mention it now. Like there's, um, I believe it is Josephus and uh, I, uh, he mentions the legion of armies. Um, I believe it's mentioned both in the scripture and in um, uh, Josephus, but he mentions uh, a legion and a legion was 6,000 men. Well, this is a very small space for 6,000 men. Plus, he mentioned 4,000 personnel that were stationary here. So that's 10,000 people. 6,000 of them are, are housed like in bar barrack style housing. And then 4,000 work there every day. So to have 10,000 people in this one little small space, it doesn't make sense that this would be Fort Antonia. Um, of course, you have the Temple Mount, the Dome of the Rock. There's a there's a dome of tablets over here, um, and some believe that that is where some people say the Holy of Holies was. 
and of course, the majority believe it was right here. Um, and of course, this is a another um, Muslim religious uh, dome over here. And then you have you have the Oval, um, and then you have the city of David. This is right here, still the the city of David, but today nobody lives right here because it's it's basically this some of this is an excavation site and they're they're showing that there's like mixes and stuff here or baptismal rooms and stuff here so oh yes yeah, thank you uh yeah the wailing wall is right over here it's right over here um when I click to the next one, actually, it'll get a somewhat of a better view. So the Wailing Wall is like it's like right over here, um, and and then of course the City of David. This what has been said is like even parts of the you can see the slope good over here, but it doesn't look like it slopes down over here, and um, some have said in the destruction that when they, uh, when Jerusalem got destroyed, in, as well as like taking out stones and and stuff like that from the structures in the temple, they also like dug out and leveled out some of the hill. So, if you've ever been to Israel, whenever you hear of Mount this or Mount that, you you to me. It's just a hill, but um, they're they're you know they're called mountains. But some of them have been leveled out, and uh, you know when they destroyed Israel, they totally like destroyed a lot. They they destroyed the landscape and everything. Um, and when you get up over in here, there's like some some rabbinic tunnels over here where they're excavating this whole western wall, uh, which is there's some really fascinating things over here. But basically, this whole area. There is like three or four layers of civilization piled on top. So when they're digging over here, you can see like other civilizations that were buried on top of who's living there now. It's, it's just pretty wild up in here. Um, so like when you go there and you, you, there's all kinds of stuff like that, it, and it's like nothing in here looks like it did in the first century because things were leveled and things were land filled and, and built on top and built on top. And, um, and uh, the palace of uh, David's uh, location is right in here, but this picture doesn't do any justice for it. Um, let's see here. So I wanted to go back to something. So the water all right so i guess i will go to the next one so this this is a alternate temple location that is based on a, um, a couple authors um this book is called the temple by robert cornuk um and he he wrote this i believe it was back in 12 or 2012 or 13 um, and he based his research on one that preceded it, and this one's called The Temples That Jerusalem Forgot by Ernest Martin. And this, this guy, um, he has a lot of stuff that, um, that Robert Cornut could build on. And of course, over the years, there's more um, archaeological finds. And so there are archaeological finds that support both views. So I lean towards this view, and I was going to explain this. Um, even with all of the stuff I've seen from being in Israel, um, I mean, I'm also of the mind that this can be wrong because um, at the end of the day, everything in this world doesn't seem as it is. Like everything is a there's deceit everywhere. So. So this, this right here, like I guess everything that I just showed you there 
is kind of a background for me to to build on this because the uh, the scriptures that I have that support all of this is kind of profound. The, the scriptures support this idea versus the current Temple Mount site. Um, so, uh, so the Gihon Spring is somewhere in this area, and the Gihon Spring. Right now, it's just a trickling low spring, and it became trickled and kind of shut down when the temple was destroyed back in 70 AD, and there was an earthquake, and you know the, the ground moved, and it quenched it. And so now it's a trickling stream. But before that earthquake, it provided the free-flowing water for everything used here. And... Um, some of the other scriptures that I'll read too um, talks about how uh, back in um, the, it was Hezekiah and well I'll wait till I get there but basically they built up walls to and they they rechanneled the water to keep it within the city of David because they didn't want outsiders and kings to have access to all this water. And so that water like facilitated everything in the city of David and, and on this supposed um, Temple Mount site here. Um, so I was just going to read through these right here, and then I'll, I'll read through some scriptures that, that um, support a lot of this stuff. Um, so is this the actual temple site? That's the question. Um, some of these uh, notes here are based on the writings of Josephus. Um, so it's 600 feet south of Fort Antonia. This makes sense that this whole platform known as the Temple Mount would be Fort Antonia. Um, I mean, why would Herod have himself a little tiny thing over here on the corner with 10,000 men crammed in like sardines? I, I don't understand how that would happen, but this makes a whole lot more sense. You've got you've got ba barracks and living quarters. You've got you know every and um, there are other uh, references out there. I, I wish that I had time to include them, but I have read of them. Um, there are references out there to other Roman temples followed this same size, very similar size and structure. Uh, uh, Roman um, fortresses, I mean, not temples, Roman fortresses. Um, this is the supposed place that Paul stood when he lectured the Jews in Acts 21 and he was arrested. Um, somewhere back in here was where he uh, was, was met with Herod to defend himself. Um, so that's the numbers of the, the people that I was telling you about. Um, um, it, uh, I, I don't remember where this was from, but this was pointed out on some other websites. So I just included it on there, planted flagstones that were around the fort. Um, I don't know if that was actually there, but I'm just supporting this drawing right here. Um, the bridge of the red heifer that leads to the Mount of Olives. This is the Kidron Valley, and um, Josephus mentions a, a southeast corner that was 40 stories high of a wall on the, the edge of the mountain. Um, and uh, this is the uh, exit waters from the Gihon Spring. So, um, so I guess what I, I don't know why, but I had lost a couple of scriptures in here, or maybe I moved them further down. And so that's why I got, I got stalled here at the beginning because I couldn't find them. Um, so I'm just going to kind of read some of this stuff here. Uh, both, so I'm, I'm speaking on the opinion that the Herodian temple is in the same place as uh, Solomon's temple, except that it was expanded, because in part of the expansion of Herod's platform, 
because it was also connected, the, the temple was connected to the fortress. Um, Josephus talks about that. And these, these do, do, double colonnades, um, you, can, you can read about it in the Jewish Wars book six in chapter two and chapter six, and then in uh, book two in chapter 15 and six. Um, Josephus is the eyewitness of all of this. He reported about all of the destruction. Um, so when you read his account, if you look at the current Temple Mount, I mean, yeah, there there is, uh, or if you look at the, not the current, if you look at the Temple Mount that's suggested here, well, these are your colonnades back here. Um, but again, that's based on a really tiny Fort Antonia, which doesn't make sense. Um, and uh, let's go back. I can't remember if I put anything. Okay, so um, yeah, I'll just take a rabbit trail real quick. So if you go searching online for alternate temple locations, you'll find several others that are alternate, but none of them necessarily seem to be as convincing with the scriptures and Josephus as the one that I first showed you. So, I mean, this shows Solomon's temple still really kind of on the, the temple mount. Um, and it doesn't look separated from, I mean, it's, it's a little bit, this, this drawing. This, um, um, so you have uh, the Ophel and then the city of David over here. Um, and then this one here, this is, a, this is an idea. I just thought I'd throw this in there. This is an idea of the third temple being over the Dome of Tablets, which is where some believe that the Holy of Holies was. So some actually believe that the temple was all the way to the north side of this platform, which that puts it even further away from the city of David. Um, the city of David is very important for where the Temple Mount is because it's documented all, all over in the scriptures that where it says Mount Zion or the city of David, uh, it'll say um, the city of David, which is also Mount Zion. Um, so, so my opinion is that that it's in the, uh, the Herodian temple is in the same location as the Solomon temple. Um, so what does the scripture say about it? Well, it was built on the threshing floor of a man named Ornan, the Jebusite, in the city of David, which is on top of Mount Maria. Um, I don't know if I'm saying it right, Maria or Mariah, but usually the I is pronounced E in Hebrew. Um, so um, in 2 Samuel 5, 4 through 9, David was 30 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 40 years in, in Hebron, and he reigned over Judah seven years and six months, and in Jerusalem he reigned 30 years over all Israel and Judah. And the king and his men went to Jerusalem unto the Jebusites and inhabitants of the land, which spoke unto David, saying, Except you take away the blind and the lame, you shall not come in here, thinking David can't come in here. But nevertheless, David took the stronghold of Zion, and the city, uh, the same is the city of David. And David said on that day, whoever gets up the gutter and smites the Jebusites and the lame and the blind that are hated of David's soul, he shall be chief and captain. Wherefore, they said, the blind and the lame shall not come into the house. So David dwelt in the fort and called it the city of David, and David built around about from Milo and inward. Um, that's basically just trying to identify the city of David with the temple. The threshing floor uh, of Ornan, the Jebusite, uh, 2 Samuel 24, 21, and Arana said, Wherefore is my Lord the king come to his servant? And David said, To buy the threshing floor of thee to build an altar unto Jehovah, that the plague may be saved from the people. In 2 Chronicles 3, 1, and Solomon began to build the house of the Lord at Jerusalem at Mount Maria, where the Lord 
appeared unto David his father in the place that David had prepared in the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite. Something is wrong with my notes, but I updated them on my phone and not updated. Ah, oh, now I know why. User error. I didn't have this on Wi Fi, so it never updated my notes over here. Okay, stand by. It's like, I just prepared all of this and it's not here. <laughs> so I looked like I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> Sorry, let me close this note and reopen it so it will register my updates here. Oh, praise God. Praise Jehovah. Okay, now I feel like I know where I'm at. <laughs> okay, so a threshing floor. Uh, what is a threshing floor? It's a flat surface that was smooth and hard where after the harvest grain was separated from the straw and husk, by beating it manually. Uh, so a lot of times, if you if you look up about threshing floors, sometimes they were high elevated on a slope because they needed the wind to to help with their with their threshing. Sometimes they would have a couple of donkeys or a couple of animals, which, whichever they would use, and they would drag uh, wood boards over the grain to help loosen it up so that they can separate the the the, um, the edible part from the parts they discard. Um, the threshing floor is a symbol and a place of judgment. Hosea prophesies all gods and idols and judgment of God scatters them as the winds of the chaff of the threshing floor. So the threshing floor is where you're getting your food and then you're discarding and burning the weeds or anything else that grows up with it. Um, and then John the Immerser, he kind of touches on this when he's talking about Yeshua coming. And he says in Matthew 3.12, whose fan is in his hand, he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. And Yeshua alludes to this with a parable, which I'm not going to read because it's several verses, and I'd rather move along to, to the temple stuff. But it's in Matthew 13, 36 through, 30, uh, 36 through 43, where he, the parable of the weeds, uh, the grain separated from the weeds. Um, so this is what I wanted to say earlier. This is all related, and please forgive me that it's kind of like out of order. Uh, if I had seen this first, I would have been had it in the right order. But uh, Mount Maria, um, Genesis 22 and 2. Um, and, and he said, take now your son, Isaac, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and get you into the land of Maria and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. And in 2214, and Abraham called the name that place Jehovah Jireh, which means Jehovah will provide. And it is said to this day in the Mount of Jehovah, it shall be seen. Um, so I read that David took the stronghold of Zion in uh, 2 Samuel 5. I'm going to skip. Um, and I read about uh, the threshing floor of, Orn, of Ornan the Jebusite in Samuel and Chronicles. I'm going to skip that. Uh, see, so uh, Nehemiah. Um, so this is this is a the, my opinion statement based on the scriptures that I'm revealing. So um, both temples were located in the part of the city that, that has the pool of Siloam or Shalom that has stairs from there to the fountain gate that lead to the water gate. I wish I had found a good picture to illustrate this, but there really, you know, it's, there's, I couldn't find anything to illustrate that ge geography. Uh, so ne ne Nehemiah 3.15, but the gate of the fountain repaired Shalon, the son of Jose the ruler of part of Mizpah, he built it and covered it and set up the doors thereof and locks thereof and the bars thereof and the wall of the pool of Siloah by the king's garden 
and unto the stairs that go down from the city of David. So talking about it's saying down from the city of David. Um, why would there be these places to immerse, to go to the temple if the temple wasn't also in the city of David? Why would people walk a third of a mile and get defiled all over again if they were going somewhere over here? I mean, that's a long walk um, because the, I guess what it's saying here um, is that there were, there were mix of pools. Um, so whether the pools, whether the pools were somewhere over here or somewhere over here, they don't have very far to walk. They have, they have access here and they have access somewhere over here. You can't see it because of the wall. Um, but if they had to come all the way over here from the city of David, that's the key. They're getting washed in the city of David. So they'd have to walk super far to get over here. So that's kind of one thing that doesn't make any sense. Um, the opal. What is an opal? It's a fortified hill. So I guess in this in this illustration, the opal is, is here. Uh, it can be a fortified hill, or from what I read in the dictionary, it can be a fortified wall. And it can also be the saddle, which this slope is rounded, so this would be like the saddle of the slope. Um, so let me try to get to the meat of some of this because there are lots of scriptures here, but um, I don't want to put people to sleep. <laughs> um, I will say uh, scriptures that talk about the opal, the fortified hill, is Nehemiah uh, 3.26 and 27 and Nehemiah 12.37. Um, so let's see, Gilsom, what am I talking about here? Resting floor. Okay, so the same dressing floor or temple is in the termination of the Gihon Spring and is also known as the Opal, which uh, uh, can be a fortified wall or saddle, which I just said, and is located at a place called the Upper Gate or North Upper Gate. So that would be this, this wall. Um, and see here. And Jotham, the son of Uzziah, he built the high gate of the house of Jehovah. And on the wall of Opal, he built much. And that's uh, in Chronicle, uh, 2 Chronicles 27.3 and 2 Kings 15.35. Um, so I'm not going to read those because it's a lot to read. Um, Okay, so this is just to identify the, loca uh, the location of the North Wall using, using Solomon's Temple. So the brazen altar is on the right, and it's cut off over here. But um, so this is this is the wall over here, uh, the North uh, the North Wall. Um, so the brazen altar is just the landmark for the fact that it's on the north side uh, for the high gate. And, and this is, um, okay, in Ezekiel. Um, and behold, six men came from the way direction of the higher gate, which lies toward the north um, and or faces the north. And every man a slaughter weapon in his hand, and one man among them was clothed with linen with a writer's ink horn by his side, and they went in and stood beside the brazen altar. So uh, it's just identifying the keywords high gate and the brazen altar is next to it. Um, The city of David, where the temples were, terminated at the Gihon Spring, which is the only freshwater spring within five, five miles of Jerusalem. So, um, I 
thought I had a picture that showed an idea of where the Seahound Spring is, but basically, according to this this map, at least the city of David area is correct. So the Gion Spring is like it's right in it's right down in here, and and there's a so which would be which would be right in here. So it, it, it ends, it commences at the Gihon Spring. Um, so I guess the other scripture references just for geography purposes, I'm not going to read them because they're pretty long. But uh, Manasseh builds a border wall in Chronicles 33:14, And if you get the full context, you just read uh, 2 Chronicles 33:12 through 17. Um, but it really just identifies he built he built a wall bordering the city of David. So I'm gonna go back to this other one so we can see David, the city of David. So this this outer wall apparently in history this outer wall has been destroyed and rebuilt many times. So um um why is that important? Because the Gihon Spring was locked in to the city of David, and they didn't want foreigners or kings or whatever to come in here and take advantage of all this water. And so they had to do their own turns on this site over here. And and if you know back then, of course, you have a big water source. Well, um, you can pretty much it, it gives you gives you a good footing and uh, have control because you don't have to worry about getting anyone back then. You know, people would walk far to get water. Um, Hezekiah, he also, he, he uh, rebuilds and strengthens the border walls of the city of David, Second Chronicles 32, 5. And he stopped the upper water course from the kings of Assyria, keeping the water inside the city of David in Chronicles 32, 30. Um, so I'm gonna, I think I've, I've drilled that part. Um, so I'm trying to make the case about the, the location being the city of David. Actually, I better put it back on there just because that's, that's Sorry. So, um, Zion and the city of David and, and Mount Moriah or Maria, they're all attributed to the city of David. And is this a higher hill? Yes, it is a higher hill. Um, I could be wrong. Um, I'm trying to find the, the one with the elevation. There we go. So, so this would be where the city of David starts, right here. And this this would be where that other mock temple was. So, but yeah, the Dome of the Rock, this is the highest part. But when you read the part about Isaac, um, the verse uh, says to go to the mountain of Mariah, Maria. So obviously, we know that there's more than one mountain. Um, it's again, um, kind of, uh, see where I'm going next here. So, I wasn't able to get a lot about the opposing side, unfortunately. Um, but there is so much, um, there's so much criticism of of this idea because there's a lot of archaeological findings. Oh, I know what I was going to say. So this corner, just pretend that this is the Temple Mount um, of today. But this corner, there was a piece of stone that had Hebrew on it that translated to something like uh, I'm paraphrasing, but it translated something like Gentiles are not, not permitted beyond this point. 
uh, because of entering this temple. Well, it works for both sites, but it's used in defense of this site. But I would say it could be very well used here because they would have to walk over here to the holy place. So it could, it could actually work for both sites. Um, but but those who use it use it for the current Temple Mount site, um, and there's lots of findings like that. Like because right now, this area is the city of David, and it's a big excavation site. All of it. So whatever they find in here, they're going to have to find something. Over, I would imagine, over time, they they might come to a conclusion. And here's my whole point for all of this. One, to get you thinking, have an open mind. But two, if this is the site, if the city of David is the site, well, they could start building this temple tomorrow. And if they start building this temple tomorrow, well, the Antichrist is, you know, can emerge anywhere, anytime. Um, I am of the mind that um, the Antichrist has to fool the Jews because, and it's going to be hard to fool them because they are so stiff necked, right? And they have their tradition and, you know, they can't be moved by anything that even remotely has any inkling of a, a Christianity or, or even Messianic or, or whatever because um, they just won't receive it. So, um, but if they can start building their temple and not have any Muslim strike war with them, well, this is their, you know, Muslim doesn't have any control. Arabs don't have any control over this over here. So if they build their temple, then we get to pray, pray, pray for Mashiach to come 